Alicia. My cousins are in the house. I'm sure the ancestors are all like, oh boy, what's she gonna say? They already know what I'm gonna say. <laughs> They're gonna be like, is she gonna get it right? Is she gonna say what we told her to say? Or is she gonna fuck it up? I'm probably gonna fuck it up, it's true. I am gonna fuck it up. I guarantee I'm gonna fuck it up. Like, I guarantee I am going to fuck it up, all right? Hey, Kiana. Hey, Kieran. Yeah, let's just get that out of the way, okay? I'm gonna offend somebody on this live stream. I'm gonna get it wrong. Um, yeah, my privilege is going to show for sure. Um, so let's just, let's say all the things at the very beginning of the live stream, right? I'm still gonna say the things that I want to say. I still wanna say the things that I need to say. I still need to say the things that my ancestors have been pushing me to say for the last two days. So um, I have, I'm supposed to be in a book writer's retreat this week. I'm supposed to be writing a book. <laughs> um, the book is mostly written actually. I'm supposed to be refining the book this week and it started yesterday and I literally could not, I mean, I, I did a couple of hours on the book yesterday, but it was, I, I couldn't focus, I couldn't concentrate. Um, there's a lot going on in the world right now. And I, I mean, if you follow me, I'm sure you've seen, I've been posting, I've done one live stream. Um, and you know, if you know me, you know that um, I am not going to take any action until I know the exact next right, next right action to take. Um, and so as a result, you'll generally see me hold back until there's something, until I'm directed to say something. So the posts that you've been seeing me make um, online are, are that. It's like when it's like the divine is like, no, you say this now. Um, and so I'm on day two of my book writing retreat. And so I'm supposed to be writing my book again right now. And I'm actually right now supposed to be doing a welcome call in my Mastering Your Spiritual Money Game program. And I had to postpone it because this morning, the ancestors, the divine was like, nope, you gotta go, you need to go say this piece. You need to go you need to go say this piece. It needs to go out into the world. You need to, you need to say this. And I knew that if I didn't show up and I didn't say this, um, that the rest of the day, the rest of the book writing day was going to be a wash as well. I actually knew I needed to do it yesterday and I didn't do it. So this morning it was like, oh yeah, you're doing nothing until you do this thing. <laughs> so here I am doing the thing. Um, how do I want to start this? There's so much to say. I have so much to say. Um, so this morning I woke up and I was, I, I generally like go through this routine of, hey Talisa, checking my telegram messages, checking on my private clients. Then I go through my Instagram messages. Um, and so I went over to Instagram and I posted a video a few days ago on IGTV. Um, it was a little snippet of a live stream that I did here on Facebook, actually, that said, that was something about like, what had happened was, um, was, hey, AB, um, was that, like, it was something about like, you can be, you can eat bacon and be spiritual, you can drink and be spiritual, so on and so forth. And so this lady responded to me the other day and she was like on the comment thread something like you know this isn't true you are what you eat you are what you think you are what you like whatever she went off on this thing on me and was basically just like that i'm bullshit and so i responded to her and i said our projections are very powerful and something along the lines of like, I don't even know, you can go to my IG story and see this because I literally snapshotted this and shared it on my IG today because I was pissed off about it. But she was like, you know, something, I don't even know. And then she love and lighted me basically at the end of her message. She was just like, 
oh, you know, she said something to me and then I responded back and said something about like projections are powerful. Um, it is what you believe or something. And then she responded back and was like, oh, so you're just in denial, love and light. And, and I just thought you guys, you, if you know me, you know that like that love and light shit, I can't fucking handle it. So I was just like, I'm like, please, your judgments, your projections, your judgments and your shames are not, your shame is not welcome here. And your love and light certainly is not welcome here. So feel free to unfollow. And then I'm like, you know what? I've had it. Like I have had it. And I'm at the point where I'm like, the shame shit has got to fucking stop. And I'm calling it out. Like I've decided. As of this morning, I'm like, anybody who wants to fucking try to love and light my ass, I'm calling that shit out. I'm calling them out. I'm not here for it. And so I posted the thing and I put it on my Instagram story and I was like, love and light is bullshit. And I was like, and yep, that's a judgment and I'm fully fucking owning it. Anyway, I had a moment this morning. And so then I got in the shower. <laughs> As usually happens when I get in the shower, the ancestors start talking to me, the divine starts talking to me, and they're just like, well, you know, let me just tell you, if it wasn't for the love and light crowd, and it wasn't for the love and light people, there wouldn't be so many, we wouldn't be at this current state of our evolution. And with everything that's going on in the world right now, we wouldn't have so many white people actually willing to look at their privilege. And I know that that sounds very, uh, I know that that sounds very opposite in Nate, like what I'm saying, but I want you to just follow along with me for a minute because when they were giving me this message, I was like, fuck off. Like, no, fuck the love and light people. I'm not here for it. Da 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 da. And I was getting pissed as I do, but here's the thing. As a collective consciousness, we are in a process of evolution. And part of that process of evolution has been love and light and spiritual bypassing. And it has been thinking that, you know, that just staying in that just think positive, just think positive mindset. And there's a lot wrong with that. But what they were saying to me this morning was that if it wasn't for that, if it wasn't for that phase of our evolution, there wouldn't be so many white people open to looking at their privilege right now. There wouldn't be so many light, white people open to being allies of black people. And so while it pisses me off and I still don't want anyone loving and lighting me, please, because it really fucking like gives me the shits, um, <laughs> I, I got it like it landed for me and I was like oh yeah because the truth is that all of it has brought us to this moment that we are right now right all of it and there so I'm like so this is not gonna be a smooth uh, eloquent Leah live stream it's gonna be dis jointed it's gonna be all over the place because I have a lot that I want to say and I am doing my best to just speak it and there is the very and I know that that I mean can I just get an amen for those of you that feel me on this there is a uh, pressure to say it right there is a pressure to not offend there is a pressure to keep my privilege in check there is a pressure to speak from my personal experience and there is a pressure to, um, there is a concern and a worry that I will be attacked. There's a concern and a worry. I mean, and ultimately it's like, these are all the things, these are all the emotional things that are happening for me right now, right? Do I care if somebody wants to come at me on this live stream? No, I don't because I'm very, I am very confident in my position of, I show up each day and try to do better. Um, I show up each day and try to learn. I show up each day and try to expand. I show up each day and I do my best. I show up each day and I say the things that, that um, I feel are important to say. Um, Hmm. 
personal integrity in the race discussion. I'm seeing a lot of people online telling other people what to do, what they should be doing, what they should be saying, how they should be behaving. Um, and there's a lot of external, you should be doing this. You should be, you shouldn't be doing this. You should be doing this. You're doing this wrong. Um, and I think it's really part of what got me so upset over the last couple of days is I'm seeing post after post after post. And you guys, I'm not gonna be, like I'm literally gonna say white women black women, like I'm, I'm just saying the things, okay, on this live stream. So I'm saying what I've been seeing it, I'm calling it what I've, how I've been seeing it, all right? It's my personal experience, my personal perception, my personal projections, you're getting all of that on this live stream. So I've been seeing a lot of white women, a lot of white spiritual women posting things like, your, pro your, your programs and your offers don't matter right now. Black lives matter. Your making money doesn't matter right now. Black lives matter. And I'm not seeing this from black women, right? I'm not seeing this from, I'm not even seeing this from brown women. I'm not seeing this from people of color, period. But I am seeing a lot of white women online telling other white women that they shouldn't be working or that they shouldn't be putting their programs and offers out into the world. And I'm just gonna call a giant bullshit on this one right now, okay? This shit pisses me off to no end. How dare you tell somebody that they shouldn't be earning a living doing what they do for work because the country is burning, because the planet is burning, because we're in the middle of a fucking, it, we're underneath a wood pile, we're a raging ember underneath a wood pile that's about to fucking go up in flames. Like, I am not here for that bullshit. How dare you? How dare you tell somebody that they shouldn't be working? How dare you tell somebody that they shouldn't be providing for their family? How dare you tell somebody that they shouldn't be sharing their purpose work into the world? Like, this is the shit about the spiritual community that just fucking irks me to no end. And here's the thing. I don't believe that it's in personal integrity for those women to be telling those other women not to work. I think they're saying it so that they can get the pat on the black on the back from the social justice activists that they follow, from the black women that are in their community. They're saying the things that they think that they should be saying to get props. That's what I think is fucking happening there. Because if they had a brain in their head, and yes, this is all judgment, if they had a brain in their head, they would be realizing that telling somebody that works as a coach or a healer or an energy worker in the online space not to work because the country is in like civil uproar about racial issues is like literally going to your fucking doctor's office and being like, hey, um, why are you open? You should close or going to your local gas station and being like, hey, Black Lives Matter, you really should shut down this gas station. Like, how dare you be coming to work? You should be online telling people that Black Lives Matter. <laughs> like, you should be standing out in front of your gas station telling people Black Lives Matter. Like, I'm sorry, but I am not fucking here for it. And I don't see any black people out there telling white people not to work. Like, it's so insane to me. So that's the first thing. I, and <laughs> you guys, like I've had it with the fucking co-signing. Like I really have. Like I am so over the fucking white women. Oh, good job. 
the three women of color in my fucking feed. I love your post. Oh my God, yeah, you're so amazing. Share, 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 share. You haven't shared shit about anything forever, right? But now all of a sudden, because, and here's the flip side. We're gonna talk about the flip side in a minute, right? But all of a sudden now, because of what's happening in the world, you're feeling pressure to speak up. You're feeling pressure to share and you don't fucking understand the issues. You don't understand the centuries of stoking of this fire. Like, and, and this is my own shit. Like, honestly, like I have to work on this. I have some clearing to do and I have some work to do around this because every time I see it, I'm like, I'm going to fucking barf. Like, and let me just tell you something else. I have unfriended so many fucking people the last three days. I'm just like, oh, co-signer, unfriend. Oh, and that's judgment, right? Like that's where I have to get my, sh I have to get my shit in check because I'm just like, oh my God. Like if I see one more white woman fucking sharing a black woman's post and being like, oh my God, this is so amazing. Da -da 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 -da, I'm like, ew, no, no. And that is not in fucking in personal integrity. If you're sharing it because you think it's what you should be doing or you're sharing it because you're afraid if you don't, you're going to get called the fuck out. It's not in integrity. It's not in integrity. Here's the flip side of it. Here's why it's happening. You guys want to know why there's so many white women out there like co-signing and fucking sharing posts and being like, oh my God, like, can the church get an amen on people's posts? Because of the fucking flip side of all the black people out there being like, I hear your silence. I hear your silence. White leaders, white women leaders, white spiritual leaders. I see you not saying anything. I'm taking note of who's not saying anything. Fuck that shit. Okay. That is exactly why we have these two fucking polar extremes. And, and how is it helping? Like what's, what's getting different? Nothing. All that's happening is a bunch of people are fucking sharing a bunch of shit that they don't even understand. They're still not getting educated. They're still not understanding. And it's, it, I told you that this wasn't gonna be smooth. There is an integrity piece, you guys. There is an integrity piece. And as a black woman, I'm, like both, right? So <laughs> like I have a white family and I have a black family, okay? So as a black woman, I cannot shame white women for not fucking understanding what the fuck I'm talking about, right? And does it get frustrating? Yes, it gets so frustrating. Like I get so frustrated by the lack of of understanding and the fucking ignorance on both sides, by the way, the white and the black side, I get so frustrated by the ignorance that it's like, I don't even know what to say. So often when you hear me not speaking up, it's because I'm so frustrated that I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, how can people be so fucking stupid? Like, how can you not see systemic and institutional racism that's been happening in your country since the beginning of time? Like, how can you sit there and be like, no, that doesn't exist? That is where you'll see me not speak out. And I don't speak out on it because I understand enough to understand and I don't fucking understand enough to educate you about it. So I don't speak on it because it is not in fucking integrity for me to speak about something that I know to be true, that I've researched and that I've studied, but that I'm not educated enough to teach you about it. So I'm not gonna fucking talk about it. So to say to our, to say, to give a blanket statement, white people, your silence is deafening. Now, like you not speaking, now I know. Now I know who you are. You don't fucking know. You do not fucking know. Are some of them racist assholes? Fuck yes. Are some of them completely privileged and blind to the fact that this shit is happening in the world? Fuck yes. Are some of them too afraid to speak out? Yes. Are some of them 
uh, too afraid to share something because they're afraid that they're going to be attacked? Yes. Is it with good cause? Yes. We have to do better. We have to do better. And right now, we are exactly where the global financial elite wants us to be. We are fighting each other. We are damn near in a fucking race war. We are rioting. We are shaming. We are blaming. We are judging. And is there going to be martial law? Yep. Is the entire United States going to get put on curf like curfew? And is martial law going to be instituted? Yeah, it's fucking happening. It's coming. It's going to. And is that going to be wrong? No, it's not going to be fucking wrong. The country is burning. People are looting. Businesses are being destroyed, both black and white. So is martial law going to happen? Yeah, probably. I would say like in my heart, I fucking believe it's happening. It's coming because we're doing exactly what they want us to do. We are fighting each other. We are, we are shaming each other. We are not listening to each other and we are not allowing people to operate from a place of personal integrity. Like literally we are, if somebody's view is not ours, they're wrong. And not only are they wrong, but I am going to shame you and make you feel like a piece of shit because you're not getting it right. And what does right mean? Well, it's my perception of what's right, right? It's my projection of what's right. And I just, and, and you guys, I don't have the solution. I don't have the solution. And I'm only speaking out about it right now because literally if I didn't, my ancestors and God isn't going to let me write my fucking book. <laughs> and the other thing is, you know, I mean, and, and thank God, because part of this is that I'm realizing my book is called Wealth Alchemy, and it's about deconstructing financial slavery consciousness on this planet. And I have not addressed the race issue in that. I have not addressed how black and brown men, women, and children are currency on this planet. All human beings are commodities. And we are all, every single shade and color of us, commodities. Period. We are all living in financial slavery consciousness. But what I have not addressed in my book, what I, which I, what I wasn't even touching on was that not only are black and brown men, women, and children a commodity, they are currency. And they are the easiest currency to manipulate because they have been oppressed long enough and in poverty long enough. And poverty, right, is the number one way to manipulate and control somebody into being the perfect currency. Our black, brown men, women, and children, they are the currency, they are the global currency that gets the very best return on investment. Those black men that are systemically shuttled into, into institutions and incarcerated in mass, in mass, at mass levels, people are being paid for each man in a prison cell, right? We are currency and we are a damn good return on investment until we begin to realize that and until we fully begin to step into that shit, there's not going to be change. Keep hearing, it's the, it's the straw that broke the camel's back. The fucking camel is just fine. The fucking camel's fine. He's cruising down the beach laughing his ass off right now. Because it's not broken, you guys. It's not broken. And we don't even understand. We don't even understand how we got here. And until we get that... There isn't gonna be change. Doesn't matter how many black men are executed on video and shown to the world. It doesn't matter. It's not gonna change. This isn't new. This shit isn't new, you guys. And, and, and this is the, the reason why I literally just sit here and I'm like, 
I sit in my bed at night, honestly shaking my head going, why all of a sudden is everyone in an uproar about this man that got killed? Because men are killed every day in much more horrendous ways than George Floyd. And this is not to discount the, the death of George Floyd in any stretch of the imagination, right? I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. But it happens every day. And let me tell you something else. You think that was bad? You should see what fucking goes on in our prison systems. You should see how black men are treated in our prison systems. It is much worse than what you witnessed on that video. I can promise you that right now. But we don't care. And we're not looking at that. We want to fix. We want to fucking put a band-aid on a rotting, festering wound. And it is not until we begin to look at what's underneath that we're going to actually see change. You know, I was laughing today. I probably shouldn't say this on here, but I was like telling Sean today, I'm like, I just cannot with the rioting. Like I, and, and I don't understand it. And I feel like that energy could be served somewhere so much better. And am I telling people to stop rioting? Fuck no. Like I'm not living in their shoes. Like I get it. I understand. And I know that people are angry. Um, now, if we truly want to begin a revolution, if we truly want to change things, it is not rioting in the streets of our cities. It is not burning businesses of white, brown, and black people. That's not how we create change. That is how we create martial law. So if that is our goal, then yes, by all means, we should continue to do that. And I'm not telling people not to riot because if that is in personal integrity for them, then by all means, they need to do what drives their soul for sure, for sure. And I don't believe that white people can tell black people that they shouldn't be rioting. I do not because you don't fucking know and you haven't fucking been there. Now, if we did want to start a revolution, I can think of some other ways. I'm not even gonna say it. I was gonna say it, I'm not. I'm just not even gonna say it because it this video will just be gone in one second. So I'll probably go say it in my Telegram channel later. <laughs> if you wanna come join me in my free Telegram channel where I'm gonna be saying all the things, I'm quite certain, then come see me over there. Because I have some ideas about ways actually that as brown and black people, we could start a revolution and actually make a difference um but the thing is is it's like the other thing is we can't half ass the fucking revolution right we can't just be like oh we're gonna go like loot and fucking burn some shit no do you want to fucking start a revolution do you actually want to create change then let's fucking go all in on that for real like let's go all in on it let's not just sort of half ass it and like stay on the fray here's the thing Daddy Bukman raised up an entire nation of slaves in Haiti. You want to see change? Let's actually make change. But playing into the, playing the game, being the pawn and doing exactly what they want us to do so that they can then come in and exert more control over us. It's not it. Like it's not it. It's not going to work. And It is not gonna get better, you guys. It's not getting better. It's gonna get so much worse before it gets better. <laughs> Mallory's dropping the Telegram channel there. Um, I'm not telling anyone that they shouldn't riot. That is not for me to decide. But I am saying that I believe that if we truly want to create change, that's not the way to do it. And people are angry. People are upset. People want to, want to be seen. They want to be heard. And that is how they know to do it. And we have to do better. We have to do better. We have to begin to really, truly desire to know and understand 
how our country was built, we have to be able, we have to be willing to learn. We have to be willing to educate ourselves. We have to be willing to look beyond the surface. And so, you know, I wish that all the white women that were out there co-signing on all the women of color's posts, instead of those co-signing and those shares and those, you know, hey, look at me, I'm an ally posts, that they were reading, that they were learning, that they were educating themselves, that they were really truly seeking to understand what's at the root of this problem. Not just that they see that a black man was killed in the street and they think it's horrendous that that was seen on television. And let me tell you something. Yes, everyone that fucking watched that video has been traumatized. Everyone. Doesn't matter what fucking color you are. If you watch that video, you have been traumatized. And yes, that sparks anger. And yes, people want to get involved. And yes, people want to make a difference. And I sincerely hope that that man's death did not happen in vain because what usually fucking happens is two weeks later, everyone goes back to their lives and forgets about the man that got killed in the street. So, we just, we have to know, we have to educate ourselves. And we have, and, and please do not feel pressured to speak. If you don't feel educated enough, if you don't feel you know enough, don't feel pressured to speak. And if you're scrolling through Facebook and you're seeing black and people of black people and people of color and whoever, right? Telling you that your silence is deafening. Don't speak because you're afraid that someone isn't going to like you. Don't speak because you're afraid that someone's gonna unfriend you. Don't speak because you're afraid that you're gonna get called out because you're not speaking on an issue that you don't know fuck all about. Part of the problem is we have a fucking ton of people out there talking about shit that they know nothing about. So, it's a delicate balance right now and For me, yeah, exactly. So Alicia's saying she's 100% traumatized. All she can see is her son calling out for her. Absolutely. Any woman that has a black son, that's all you fucking see. It's all I saw when I watched the video. You cannot see anything other than that, right? If you have a black son and you watch that video and you're a mother, you can't see anything but that. It's fucking intentional. That is exactly what they want you to be feeling. They want you to be traumatized. You are easily, you are more easily controlled when you are traumatized. I really want people to like think about this very, very carefully. Why do you think that this video was released at the time it was released? Why do you think this video was released and was allowed to go viral? And if you do not believe that this video was allowed to go viral, you have a lot more research that you need to do. You really need to fucking understand the, the beast that is the media companies and corporations. You were allowed to see that video. You were allowed to see that video because that video is fucking traumatizing. Black women, traumatized. Black men, traumatized. That could be me. The mothers, that could be my son. Or that could be my husband. Or that could be my father, right? White people, whoa. Now we've got a bunch of people up in arms wanting to go out and fan the flames of social justice, not knowing what the fuck they're talking about. They're gonna start spouting off. They're gonna piss off the black people and the black people are gonna start telling them that they're fucking wrong and now they're offending. And literally, like, we've created this shit storm, right? This fucking, a firebomb just happened and we're exactly where they want us to be. Divided, divided against each other. And is privilege a problem? Fuck yes, it's a problem. 
Is systemic racism a problem? Yes. Is institutional racism a problem? Yes. And do we solve it all with love and light? No, we do not. But we do begin to solve it when we come together and we start educating. And are there a bunch of BIPOC and women of color that are fucking tired of educating people about this shit? Yes because all they do is fucking try to educate people and nobody fucking listens and nobody's receptive. And I can imagine because literally like even the thought of, I think um, I saw Adia say something about how she doesn't, she doesn't want to educate anyone. I don't either. I really don't like, I don't want to be on this fucking live stream right now. I would much rather be in my program doing my program call that I'm supposed to be doing right now. Like I would, but that wouldn't be in personal integrity with me. It wouldn't have been in personal integrity with me to go and do that live stream in that group when this is happening in the world. And when I feel like I've got a lot of white women in my audience that don't really fucking know what to do. I have a lot of white women with biracial children. I have a lot of women of color that aren't black women that all have been reaching out to me saying, what do I say? What do I do? How do I navigate this? I'm afraid. I'm afraid to speak out. I'm afraid that I'll say the wrong thing. I'm afraid that I'll offend. You're going to, you're going to say the wrong thing. You're going to offend and you should still speak out, but you should, you should speak out from a place of personal integrity. You should not be speaking out because you feel pressured to, because somebody's calling you out on your silence because that's fucking bullshit. There are people that are not speaking out because they don't give a fuck, okay? And yeah. Do we need to know who those people are? Probably, but in the long run, is it gonna help the cause? Is it gonna help us change things to know who the people, who the leaders are that don't give a fuck? Well, yeah, probably for black women and men um, or people of color, like to not be supporting those people with their money would be a good idea, I would say. Um, and so I think there's a bunch of people that are out there like calling out those people and good on them, I guess, you know, like not, not my circus, not my pony, not my rodeo. Like <laughs> I, that's not me. I'm not, I'm not doing that shit. Okay. But there are people out there doing it and I think that's okay. So there's people out there not saying anything cause they don't give a shit. Right. There are people out there not saying anything because they have not fully realized and recognized their privilege and they don't believe that they need to say anything, okay? There are people out there who are not saying anything because they don't know what to say. There are people out there not saying anything because they don't wanna say the wrong thing. There are people out there not saying anything because they are worried about saying the wrong thing and then getting attacked. There are people out there not saying anything because they are choosing to educate themselves instead. And honestly, of all those people fucking good on you. Um, and there are people out there that aren't comfortable speaking about these issues. And so they're not, and maybe they're speaking about these issues inside their personal containers. Um, I know a couple of women, spiritual white, spiritual women leaders who have been called out that have not been speaking about it publicly on their page, but they've been speaking about it inside their containers. So let's not be so quick to pass judgment. Let's fucking worry about our own personal integrity. Let's worry about our own messages. Let's worry about what we are doing to create change. Let's worry about how we can show up every day in personal integrity and make a difference. Someone posted on one of my posts the other day and was like, well, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> I'm like, fuck you. What are you going to do about it? Like, let's stop projecting all of our shit out into the world and try to bring it back to self. And what can we do and how can we show up in, in this moment to be better? And how can we show up in this moment to, to, to do better? Um,
Yeah. So, I mean, these are sort of the things that have been on my mind and on my heart the last couple of days. Um, I'm, I'm grateful for my own personal struggle around this because um, obviously one of the things that I've realized through this process is that part of my book really needs to talk more about the exploitation of um, black men and women inside the global financial agenda. Um, and so, yeah, um, which requires a whole lot more education on my part, right? Because I know what's happening, but I don't have enough knowledge to write about it in a book. So here I go down the rabbit hole of figuring that out so that can be included because it's a really, really important part. And yeah, I mean, for me, and this is one of the hardest things to do as a human being, believe it or not, is to fucking have compassion for each other. It's so difficult because we're so full of projections and judgments that it's extremely hard to look at somebody else and have compassion for where they are in that moment. Um, and I think, you know, the biggest thing for me is it, it just comes back to that personal integrity piece, right? If you want to speak out because you have a message that you feel like needs to be heard, then do that. If you read someone's post, white or black, and you're like deeply touched and hugely inspired by the post, and you feel like it's something that other people should hear, by all means, share it. If you are inspired by something somebody posts, then yes, let them know in their comments. What I was talking about early on in this live stream was not that. It, was, it doesn't come from that place. Energetically, it doesn't come from that place. It comes from, hey, see me, see me. I'm a white woman. I'm liking your post. See me, see me. I'm a white woman. I'm sharing your post. Don't come after me. Like, it's a different energy. So absolutely share the things that inspire you. If you feel like somebody's doing an amazing job of educating people and you don't feel like you are in a place to educate right now, share somebody else's post. Share somebody else's work that they've done. Credit them direct people to their page so that people can go follow them. Like that's probably the best thing that you can do as a white woman um, or as a light skinned woman or as a biracial woman or even a fucking black woman. Like it's the best thing that you can probably do if you don't feel comfortable enough speaking on your own is to share people's information that's inspiring you and to credit them and to direct people to their page so that they can follow them for education because there are so many people out there doing an amazing job of education when it comes to this stuff. So find those people and then start directing people to those people, right? Um, I was just gonna say something, but now I've lost it. I guess just on the on the compassion piece, you know, I I I I feel compassion for the rioters and the people that are looting. I feel compassion for the people that are losing their livelihoods and their businesses of all colors, right? Of all colors. Um I feel compassion for a nation and a planet that is hurting. I feel compassion for our governments. <laughs> I feel compassion for our governments that are trying to figure out what the fuck to do. Um, and I have so many judgments, right? And so my job every day is to look at my judgments and look at my projections and bring it back to self and fucking do the work and look at where it's actually me that's showing up in that way and continue to go through my process and continue to, to do my own work. And wow, we just lost like 20 people off this live stream. Something I just said pissed people off. <laughs> oh my God. All right. Well, 
Um, yeah, so I guess that's really it. Um, yeah, I mean, you guys, this is the thing. It's just, that is, it's that shit, Alicia. Like, I literally just said that the other day. I was like, oh my God, so we can go spend all this fucking money on this vaccine and Flint still doesn't fucking have clean water. Like, it's madness. It is madness and it is insanity what's happening in the world right now. And I think everyone agrees on that, right? I think everyone can agree that it's a fucking train wreck. Um, it's a sparking ember that's about to turn into a fucking bonfire. Like, that's what's happening and that's what's going to happen. And... I don't believe that we change it through separation. Um, and I know that we have a lot of work to do to get to a place where we can trust each other. And I don't know how we get there. I wish I did, like I wish I knew. I wish I knew what the recipe was. I wish I knew what the secret was to get us to the place where we Can trust each other enough to come together to change things um, but I think it partially it's what we're learning right now um, and then just lastly to kind of touch on the love and light thing one more time it's like I do believe that you know all the work that we've been doing as a collective to raise our consciousness um, is the reason why black people have so many allies in white people right now. Um, it is that evolution of our consciousness and it is that stepping more into our spiritual beingness that has allowed that. And so there is a place where we have to like give credit and also be like, okay, so <laughs> like, like we can't bypass and we have to recognize that the bypassing is actually what's allowing us to have more allies than we had in the first place. So it's, there's no easy answer. There's no easy answer. There's no easy answer. It's like, take even just the question of the country is burning. The cities are burning. The people are rioting. They're looting businesses. They're stealing. They're, they are destroying property, okay? have compassion for those people, completely understand why they're doing it. And the people that have been elected to protect our cities and all each person within those cities, can they just sit by and allow the cities to burn and the properties to be destroyed? No, they can't. Like they were literally elected to protect those businesses that are being looted and burned. So we're in this, this catch 22, right? It's like, gotta have compassion for both and then also have to understand. So again, like when the rioting continues and the looting continues and then martial law is instituted, do not be surprised. Do not be surprised. It's coming, it's coming. <sighs> so anyway, that is my mind brain soul dump for the day um yeah now that's a fucking powerful thing right alicia last time saturn was in aquarius rodney king happened last time pluto was in capricorn the american revolution happened last time neptune was in pisces rome fell we have all of those things going on right now so astrologically i mean whatever i've been telling you guys for a year that it was going to be a shit show this year so here you have it it's here here you have it um, anyway, I love you guys. I love you all. And, you know, those of you that are members of my community and are concerned about speaking out or want to know what's appropriate, I don't fucking know. Um, and I'll do my best to help guide you. Um, <laughs> but, um, it's funny and I'm actually, Alicia, that's part of what I'm talking about in the monthly wealth forecast today. Um, Oh, and just as a last thing, I have to say this. Healers, go out and heal. Energy workers, go out and do your purpose work. White, brown, black, purple people, fucking work. 
Go work, go do your work in the world and do not let anyone tell you that you cannot. It's fucking bullshit. I'm literally gonna start calling out every single person that I see online that's telling people that their fucking work isn't as, as important as black lives right now. Those two things have fucking nothing to do with each other. Go, healers, we need your healing. Energy workers, we need your energy work. Anybody doing your purpose work, we need you to go out and be doing your purpose work in the world. Do not let anyone stop you. Um, and everyone else, you need to provide for your fucking family, right? <laughs> like you need to work, you need to make money. Do not be ashamed of working. Do not be ashamed of making money. Do not be ashamed of putting your offers out into the world. Um, fuck all of you sending me the love and light. Um, so anyway, monthly wealth forecast where we're going to be talking about some of the astrological shit show that's happening. That's causing some of this stuff is happening at 12 PM Bali time, which is in, I think around two hours or an hour. I don't even know an hour probably from now, um, in my group, rich abundance. So if you're not in there, come join us over there. Um, and now, anyone that's in Mastering Your Spiritual Money Game, I am now going to do the welcome call now that I've gotten all this stuff off my chest and I can come and be fully present with you guys. And my program, I'm going to fucking sell my program right now. My program where we're going to be talking about all of this shit, right? How we got here, how we got into global financial slavery consciousness. It starts today. It starts today. Mastering Your Spiritual Money Game. We're gonna be diving deeply over the next 10 weeks into how we actually got here and how we get out. So um, you can still sign up for that. I don't know if Mallory's still on this live stream. Maybe she could drop the lead page for Mastering Your Spiritual Money Game. Maybe she could drop the link for a Rich Abundance so you can come join me in there for the wealth forecast. I will continue to be selling my offers because I know that my work is deeply needed and deeply necessary in the world at this time. So I do that unapologetically and there you have it. So I love you all. Go do your work in the world. I'll drop the links because I think Mallory may be gone. Mwah.